Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of Throw. In this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use blueprints in order to throw a ball. So your character will pretty much just attach a, an actor to your hand or wherever you want to attach it. And then it'll apply impulse to shoot it forward. This can be used to something throw something like a grenade, maybe a boomerang, uh, maybe something like a ball to capture monsters and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to launch 5.4.2. And now for games, I'm just going to select third person and I'm just going to call this throw ball project. And now that the project's launched, I'm going to go to mixamo.com and I'm just going to use this X bot and I'm going to look for a throw animation to import to my project. So I'm just going to go to the animations tab over here, I'll type in throw, click enter. And this throwing animation looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and download that. I'll do wood skin. I'll do something like 60 F frames per second and click download. And I'll just leave that on my desktop. Once that's downloading, I'm just going to drag it into my my project. And when you import it, make sure that import animations is selected. Click import all. And now you'll see this throw animation and I'll double click to open this up. And I'm just going to retarget this over to my third person character. So I'll just open this up to find the skeleton, go to the SKM Quinn sample. And I think I'm going to actually change this to the Manny. So what I'm going to do is just go back to this animation, right click, retarget animation, and then select the SK mannequin just like this and I'll double click the throw animation and then click on export animations and I'll just call this uh, throw underscore and just leave that in the content browser and click export export again and then I'll delete everything else and just keep that throw animation throw and I'll just rename this to throw and then I'm going to duplicate this and call this aim so what I'm going to do is double click aim and pretty much for this I just want it to be something around here. So 38 is fine. So I'm going to right click and remove frames 39 to 132 so that it'll stop right here and save and then go back to the content browser, go to throw. And now I need to delete everything before 38. So I'm going to leave this at 38 again, right click and remove frames zero to 38. So it's basically a continuation. So I just continued this um, or I just broke up this animation into two. And now what I need to do is set up an input action to throw. So what we're going to do is a hold and release type thing. So I'm just going to go into the inputs folder, go to the actions, right click under input. I'll create an input action called this IA underscore throw. Double click to open this up. And now what I'm going to do is just add two triggers. So one of them will be a hold and the second one will be uh, release. So I'll just save that and I need to add that to my input mapping context. So I'm going to go back to the input folders, look at this IMC or open up this IMC default, which stands for input mapping context, add a mapping and then add in that input throw. And I'll change the keybind to something like F, just personal preference, whatever you use for throwing. Uh, it could be F, G, whatever you want. Hit control save. And now what I need to do is in my third person character blueprint, or in the third person character, go to the event graph. Now I'm under all of this stuff. I'm just going to right click, add in the IA throw, and we actually need to create the ball. So <laughs> let me go back to the content browser and I'm just going to right click, click blueprint class, select actor. And I'm just going to call this BP underscore ball, double click to open this up. And all I want to do is just add a static mesh and I'm just going to call this ball and I'm just going to add the static mesh to be this SM ball, which looks pretty good. This honestly looks like a perfect monster catching ball to me. This is also native in your Unreal Engine. It's just in the VR editor slash basic meshes folder or in the engine folder. And for the scale, I think this looks really big. So I'm just going to narrow or put this down to 0 0.25 with the scale lock selected just so it's pretty small. Might need to be a little smaller, honestly, but I think 0.25 is fine for now. And a few things that we need to do is make sure that simulate physics is off because we're actually going to turn that on during the blueprint. Um, I do want it to simulate hit events because this, if you're throwing a ball, you want it to simulate that just so it can detect something it impacts or perhaps you're trying to catch some sort of monsters for a game that you're making. And then a physics material override will help with adding some bounciness or some lifelike type stuff. But first, let me add a collision preset. So I'm just going to set this to no character cannot step on this. So change this to custom, 
collision enabled, world dynamic, and block everything is fine. And then I want to create a new physics material. So I'm just going to click on this, type in PM underscore ball for physics material. And then I'll select this physics material and I'll double click to open this up. And I think I'm just going to set this to something like two for this, for the friction and for the restitution, I'm going to set this to one just to give it, I think the max bounciness. Yeah. So it'll give it the most bounciness. So I'll just control save. You can edit this to however you want, depending on how bouncy or live, like you want the ball or whatever you're throwing to be. But in my case, this ball will be kind of bouncy. I'll hit compile and save. Now I'm going to go back to my BP third person character. And now we need to actually trigger some events where my character will be able to grab or I guess hold the ball as soon as I start throwing, aim it, and then shoot it out of the, my hand. So just for debugging purposes, when it's started, I'm just going to print string. And now I'll just type in holding. And after it's holding, I want to, I want to play an anim montage. And now I need to create two anim montage based off the throw and aim. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to right click under animation, create an anim montage. And you want to use that skeleton that you're using for your character. So actually, let me change this real quick. So for my mesh, I'm going to change it to this SK mannequin. And then I'm going to change the AVP to Manny, just personal preference. And I'll just copy paste this SK mannequin name. And now I need to go back to that throw where the throw animation is, right click, animation, create an anim montage. And this will be for the SK mannequin skeleton. And I'll just call this AM underscore throw. And I'll just drag in the throw here. And that's the ending. So now we need to one for the aim. So I'm just going to right click, go to animation, create an animation montage, and I'll call for the same skeleton and I'll call this AM underscore aim. Double click to open this up and just drag in that aim animation. This will also help if you want to add any notific or any notifies within your animation. I'll close this out. I'll close these out too. Don't really need this. Don't need the BP ball either. And now I just have my third person character open. So what I want to first trigger as my anim montage is the am aim and i'm just going to start the default one to start that section and now after that happens i want to spawn an actor so i'm going to do a spawn actor from class and now we're going to select that bp ball we created and i'm just going to drag out this spawn transformation and get socket transform and we're going to target we actually want to target our mesh. And now what we need to do is create a socket that will pretty much tell it where to spawn this actor. So I'm going to go back to my skeleton and double click to open this up. And now I want to create a socket under my hand underscore R. So because I'm using the third person pack, you'll already see weapon R and weapon muzzle. I'm just going to copy the name for weapon underscore R and just put that in here or just paste that in here and make sure that your class is BP ball. And now after this, I want to set this to a variable and I'm going to call this variable held ball. And you'll know that it's already set to the BP ball because that's the class we're returning. And then I want to try attaching the actor to a component and the target in this case will be the held ball. And then the parent will have to be the mesh. So I'm just going to drag out the mesh and just connect this to parent. And now I just want to snap to target for the location rule and the rotation rule. So let's test this out. But one thing we forgot is during our anim montage, if we just play this now, and if I click F, it is not spawning in the right place. It's I'm not sure why it's actually launching me up. <laughs> so let's try to fix that. So don't forget in the actor, in the attach actor to component, I also want to set this to weapon underscore R. That's probably what was making me fly up. So when I go ahead and click my aim, it's playing the animation, but it's not holding at the end. And you'll see that when I move, the, the collision of this ball is actually messing with my character. So let's go ahead and fix that. So now before we attach the actor and right after we spawn, I'm going to make some room. Drag this out and set 
collision enabled for the ball. And I'll just connect the held ball over here, leave that under here, and I'm gonna just put in no collision. So now, when I go back to my game and spawn the ball by holding my F key, it's not gonna mess with my character's movement as it was before. And you'll see that my character is just playing the animation and not looping. So we're gonna go back to the anim montage itself for the aim specifically. And I'm gonna add a new montage section and I'm gonna just call this loop. And I'll play this at the very end so that it'll freeze over here at this frame. So it'll go from default to loop. And then after loop, I wanna go from loop to loop. So it'll just be stuck here. So now let's go ahead and try this out. So when I click F, my character's just gonna stop here. And if I click it again, it'll stop here again. So it looks like he's about to throw it, but he's not actually releasing it just yet. And that's because we only set up our on pressed part or on started in this case, but we don't have anything for the completed. So after it's completed, I wanna print string and I'm gonna call this released for debugging purposes. And after it's released, I just want to play an anim montage and I'll move this down quite a bit. And then this will be the throw. So this will be our finishing part of the animation. I'll leave the start section name default because that's what I left it as. And now what we need to do is detach that ball we have in our hand from our actor. So I'm going to call it detach from actor. And now I'm going to do keep world for location rule, rotation rule, and scale rule. And then after that, I want to make sure that the set simulate physics turns on and the target will be the ball. So I will look for, I'll just type in, I'll just get out this or take out the mesh for the set simulate physics. And then I'll drag in the held ball do get ball and connect this to the target, just like this. And now I wanna enable collision. So I'll set collision enabled. And this will be again for the held ball and I'll connect that in. And now I'm gonna add an is valid with the held ball plugged in. And if it is valid, then we are gonna add a branch, which the condition will be set to true. So no, delete these two. And now after our collision is set to enabled, we're going to add an impulse and our target for the impulse is actually going to be this target ball again. So I can just go ahead and connect this or for readability, I'm just going to copy paste this underneath and connect this to the target. And for the impulse, I want to drag this out and get a forward vector because when my pawn throws it, I want it to be shooting in front of my character. So what I'm going to do is get actor forward vector. And now I'm going to drag this return value out and type in a star or a shift eight in order to multiply. And I'm going to right click on this B and convert it to a float single precision. And now I'm going to right click on this and promote this to a variable, which is going to be called throw force. And you can, I can't set the default value just yet until I compile the blueprint. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and set it to something like, uh, let's do 20,000. This might be a lot, but for an open world game, it might be pretty useful. So now I'm just gonna connect this pin over to impulse so that it'll say how much force we need in order to throw it forward. And now let's go ahead and try this out. So after I compile and save and go back to my character, I'm just gonna, my character will stop here. And if I let go, he'll finish the animation and the ball is stuck in my hand. So let's go ahead and fix that part. Add the impulse. I need to go back and make sure that set simulates physics has this check mark. And then we have to reset that collision enabled and I need to set it to query and physics. I need to drag in the held ball, get held ball, and then connect the target to detach from actor or else I won't know that the, act, the held ball is the one being detached from the actor. So now when I go back to my map, hold F and let go, now my character will actually throw the ball. And there's a lot of things you can do with this and I'm actually gonna add on to this in a later video is you can have some, you can add a trajectory line uh, you can also zoom in your camera and I'll do a really simple zoom in real quick. So now I'm going to go back to my BP third person. So at the very beginning, right after my print string, I'm just going to move this back a bit. I'm just going to add a set target arm length. And you may not be able to see this until you take off the context sensitive. And now I'm going to do something like 120. And for the target, I need to connect my camera boom. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my camera boom to my event graph and connect this. And I also want my camera to look uh, at a decent angle 
if I want something like over the shoulder is kind of what I'm going for right now. So what I'm going to do is add a set relative location over here under the transformation section. And I'll do something like 20, 20, 30, and I'll do 70. And I checked this beforehand just so I don't have to go through all the editing with you guys. So I'm just going to drag in the follow camera, connect it to target and hit compile. But I don't want it to be stuck here. So I need to do the opposite or whatever the default is for the other side. So I'll just copy paste this, put it down here, connect this print string to here, and then copy paste this set relative location, create some space, connect these ex execution pins. And for the new location, I'm gonna set this back to 000, and the arm length will be back to 400 because currently, because that is the default here. So now I hit compile and save. And when I hit play, and now basically when I aim, it's gonna zoom in over my shoulder. And because this ball is huge, it covers a lot of my screen, but I can turn to the side. And when I let go, it, my camera's just gonna go back. And you can just do a simple lerp or a timeline in order to have a smoother transition, but that's just a very, very basic example. So another thing I want to do is I can just go back to my BP ball actor and change the size of this to 0.10. Maybe it'll be stimulating a real ball and the ball looks like it's in my hand, but it's also overlapping, which looks a little odd. So I'll throw it and it looks like a bullet. So the size of the ball will really take a huge part of um, how fast it goes on the throw force. And that's just because of the size of the ball itself. So if I were to do something like one, this is gonna be a really fat ball. And you'll see that it's not gonna move that much. Probably because I'm in the way, but as well as just the size and physics takes effect onto this ball. So I'll go ahead and change that back to, let's try 0.10. And in order to just make sure that this doesn't fly off like crazy, go to my third person character. And the only thing I need to edit is the throw force. So I said to 20,000, let's do something like 1000 because of how small it is. And now when I go back to my map, I'm gonna hold the ball in my hand and throw it. And now it'll kind of be weak. Maybe I need to do something like 4,000 or three or 5,000, but I also wanna make sure that it's perfect. And in order to make sure that it is aiming properly, I'm just gonna hold F8, click on this pause button. So I held F and then I click F8 to get up and then I click on this pause button. Now, when I go into my character skeleton, I am going to, under weapon R, I am just going to, so what I would recommend is if you are gonna use weapon R for multiple things, then don't um, don't really edit this one. Just add a new socket and change the names in the event graph over here under the get socket transform and under the attach actor to component. But in my case, since I'm not gonna change it, I'm just gonna edit this one. So back in my skeleton, I will just right click and add a preview mesh and I'm gonna add that ball. And for the preview mesh for the ball, it's actually not letting me resize it in my skeleton itself, which might be a little hard to manage. So I'm just gonna right click and remove all attached preview assets and I'm just gonna change it from here. And this looks pretty good to me. So I'm just gonna cancel out of these. And now when I go back to my character and hold the aim button, it looks like the ball is being held in my hand and I can just toss it forward just like that. Oh, let me increase the throw force. Throw force, I'll increase it to 5,000. This will probably be a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And now you'll see that the ball travels a good distance, good for an open world. And all I need to do is just hold F. It'll play the first half of the animation throw it forward and it'll play the second half to make it look like I actually threw the ball and I can hold it, kind of aim it just like that. And yeah, that's pretty much how you throw an item, throw an object, throw a ball. And thanks for watching Code of Zero. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. These, the project files for this will be available for Patreons in the description below. I'll also uh, put it in the, I'll also pin it as a comment on YouTube. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.